Hello? Hello, this is Alice calling from ABC Law Firm. May I speak with Martin, please? Yep, that's me. Great, thank you, Martin. I am calling to remind you about an overdue task. Specifically, we have not yet received the information about your assets. This task is three days overdue. Could you please confirm if everything is on track to send this information? Yeah, where should I send to and in what format? You need to send the information about your assets, including each asset's value and ownership type via email to intake at abclaw.com. The file should be in Excel format and should not have a password. Do you have any other questions or concerns about completing this task? No, no, I think all clear. Great. When do you think you will be able to complete this task by? I think I can send it this Saturday. Thank you, Martin. Just to confirm, you'll be sending the information this Saturday. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. Now, what you've just seen wasn't actually Alice speaking to me. It was an AI voice agent that was following up on an overdue task that we actually have stored in Clio Manage. If you can see over here on the screen, we have an open matter with an overdue task of three days with send information about assets and, and a description assigned to myself. And the AI voice agent not only was able to uh, call up the client, get the information from them on when they'll be able to complete it, but also then pass that information back to the case management software. As you can see over here, we now have a new task created, follow up with client read task name, send information about assets set for this Saturday, as that's when the client committed that they'll be able to complete the task by. Also in notes, we have a brief summary of the call. The status was commitment to complete obtained when Saturday, and then the summary of the call as well, briefly describing what has happened. Now, this is the power of automated phone chases for boutique law firms using AI voice agents. In this video, I'm gonna explain how you can build one just like that and start experimenting with these technologies already in your firm. Now we need to complete three steps in order to build something like this. First of all, we need to set up our AI voice agent and for this we'll be using a platform called Vapi. After that, we'll need to set up an automation that will gonna be actually triggering the outbound call that we'll do with an automation platform called Make. And lastly, we'll need a separate automation to process the call results once the call is completed to understand what was the outcome and then make any actions such as creating more tasks or creating notes in our case management software. Again, we'll do that with Make. So let's jump in and look at the first step, the voice agent. Again, I have set up this in Wapi. Essentially how it works is, first of all, you have an opening message. So for example, in this case it was, hello, this is Alice calling from ABC Law Firm. May I speak with the person first name, please? And this person first name is a variable that's passed when we are creating the call in step two inside of Make. Then we have, a system prompt, which essentially explains to the AI what, what's its job. So right in this case, we're saying you're an assistant at ABC Law Firm, please first confirm that you're speaking to the right person. If it's not the right person, please disconnect, politely end the call. If the person is the right one, please explain that you have a task overdue and how much overdue it is. And then we are passing the information about the task name and the days that it is overdue. And then, Feel free to use the details in the description to answer any questions that the person may have about uh, the task. For example, what I asked, hey, like where should I actually send it, right? And for that, we are passing the task description. If there are any issues that the customer has with the task which you cannot answer with this task description, then please take a message and pass it on to the team. And lastly, if everything is clear, confirm with them when they'll be able to complete it by, and finally, end the call. So. In general, in this case, we have three outcomes that we can have. Either everything is fine and we get the commitment from the client of when they're gonna be completing the task by. And in that case, we're gonna be passing as a result, essentially, either for example, you know, a day such as a Saturday or I'll complete it on the 29th at 12 p.m., whatever. The second outcome could be that it's actually not the right person, right? And in which case the call disconnects and we don't disclose any information, which is obviously important. And then the third scenario is if they have any issues, then it will collect information about the issues that they're experiencing and pass that note onto the team. Now, 
Apart from uh, the system prompts, we also have a few more settings, such as, for example, which model we are using. In this case, we're using OpenAI. We can also connect it to a knowledge base, for example, for, like more, com for more complex assistance, not in this case. Then we're choosing which transcriber model we need, we're going to be using, which voice model we're going to be using as well. You can choose from a plethora of different voices with different accents and also different, uh, let's say, speeds and latencies, which also then is kind of like a balance with the quality of the actual voice generation. Functions is a more advanced topic. And then in, in the advanced tab, we also have uh, the survey URL where it's, it's sending the end of call reports to, which will then be used at our step three of our automation. And lastly, the end call message as well. In the analysis as well, very important, it will summarize the call and also provide us with a certain outputs in a data schema. For example, in this case, I have specified one for each one of the scenarios that I've just described. So in case there's an issue raised, if the clients expressed have an issue with completing the task, set this field to whatever this issue was. If the, the call got finished because it was an unauthorized person, not the right person, then we are setting this second field to true. And if we actually got the commitment from the person to complete the task, then we'll have this other field task completion date time commitment, which will store information of when the customer has committed to actually completing the task. And so each one of those will be filled in depending on which scenario, again, described in our system prompt, the AI voice agent will encounter. So that's step one, defining the AI voice agent. As well, you can play um, around with it and test it out over here, talk with, talk with the agent. The only issue is you're not actually passing any variables, so it won't be exactly the same experience. Step two is creating the automation to actually trigger the call. And in this case, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking up any of the tasks that are assigned to our clients inside of Clio Manage, which are three days overdue, right? So for example, in this case, on this matter, set information about assets. Obviously for this particular demo, I just have one matter. In your case, obviously in production could be many more matters and then thus many more calls being generated. Inside of the task, we have the task name and again, the description of what needs to be completed. It is assigned to our client. And as you can see, the due date is three days in the past. So this is what this first uh, module over here is doing. It's looking up the tasks that have status pending. So status not completed three days from now, or three days, so sorry, in the past. And that's a D type is contact, meaning it's actually the client that is responsible for it. After that, we are iterating through all the tasks that we found. We are getting information about the contact to get their name and also to get their phone number. And then we are sending the phone call to VAPI using our assistant ID, which we got created and I've shown in step one, and then passing the variable values, right? So passing the first name, which again will be filled out in the script over here and over here, passing the task name, the task description, how many days it is overdue, and finally contact ID and manner ID, which will then be useful in step three once we actually receive the result of the call, we'll then be able to act upon it and update the correct details in the correct matter. And finally, passing as well the phone number and the name of the person again here as well. And finally, the phone number ID, that's essentially, in Bobby, you can buy a phone number from which you'll be making those calls. So we just pass in the ID of that number here as well. Now you can set this automation to be running, for example, every weekday at 12 and to be making all those all phone calls automatically. Obviously for the purpose of this demo, I'll just be running it once and seeing, and seeing the result ad hoc. So that's step two, automation to trigger the call. And lastly, step three is the automation to process the call result. So once the call is completed, VAPI will make a request to the URL that we have defined over here in the advanced settings, which is actually a webhook, with all the information about the call results, the summary, and also any of the fields that we have defined here in analysis in the, in the data schema. This is how this uh, looks like in terms of the, the information that we are getting from VAPI. As you can see over here, we get a summary. We also get the information about the variables that we passed at the beginning. So for example, such as contact ID, matter ID, the task description, task name. And also we are getting information about the analysis, as you can see with these three variables that I've defined. So again, three scenarios. If it is unauthorized, so we have this variable call finished unauthorized set to true. 
In that case, we'll be creating a note in Clio saying status unauthorized phone number may be incorrect, put in the summary of the call, and then also creating a, a, a task against that matter for one of our staff members saying check phone number, phone number may be incorrect because the AI agent tried to call the client but didn't get through to the right person. So the firm member can already act upon that information. Now, if there has been an issue raised, so we have this variable issue raised, which is not empty. In that case, we'll be creating a node as well in the case with a summary, but then with the status of issue raised and also the description of the issue, which again, the AI agent will generate. It will put summary of whatever issue the person is experiencing. I'll showcase all of the three scenarios in just a second. And then also create a task immediately for one of our firm members saying client experience an issue with task, the task name, again, due date now and saved against the matter. Now, finally, if we actually obtained the commitment from the person to uh, complete the task, in this case, we'll be passing another message to ChatGPT in this case, saying a user has committed to complete the task by the following, and we'll say, for example, the Saturday, or by the 29th, or uh, tomorrow, tomorrow evening. Having in mind that the, the current time date now is, and we are passing the current time date, when will the user be complete the task? Please output it in ISO data format. So following this format, which we'll then be able to use in our later automation steps. So essentially what we are doing is we convert in this generic natural language. So let's say like this morning or this evening or tomorrow or on Saturday, and we're converting it to an actual timestamp, an actual date time format that we'll be able to use in our automation. And then I give a few more guidelines. So for example, for morning, it's actually incorrect. For morning, the hour should be set to 10 a.m., for afternoon, 4 p.m., for evening, 6 p.m. If the time is not specified, put 12 midday. Output only the result in ISO format. After that, we are pars parsing this output to actually convert it into a daytime format that make can understand. And then creating a note on the case, as you have seen already, commitment to complete obtained. When will it be completed? Formatting it in essentially, you know, day of week, date, and then hour. And then the summary of the call. And creating a task, uh, follow up with client every task. But now this due date will be at whatever time the client has specified. So if it will be the Saturday, it will be the Saturday. If they said in three days, it will be in three days. So that's completely dynamic. All right. So that has been step three. So we now have the full system set up. Let's actually now test it out. Let's look at each one of these scenarios one by one. So let's first look at the unauthorized option. So I will trigger the, uh, the call and say that I'm not the right person. Calling from ABC Law Firm. May I speak with Martin, please? Um, no, sorry, I'm I'm actually Justin. Thank you, Justin. As you can see, it proceeds to immediately end the call. Obviously, we can add a few more instructions in terms of them saying, um, you know, like sorry, sorry about the inconvenience. So, you know, have a nice day. Um, let's see what happens. Let's see if this automation ran. Let's click save changes. As you can see, as you can see, this first branch ran because again, in the analysis, we actually got that called finished unauthorized was true, set correctly. And so that means if we go now go against the matter, this obviously is the task that was created previously. But as, as you can see, one created for today, check phone number, AI agent called client, but phone number may be incorrect. And also against the notes, we have a new note over here. Unauthorized phone number may be incorrect. At least from BC Law Firm called Looking for Martin, but spoke with Justin instead. So the firm staff can immediately act upon this issue. Now let's have a look at the second scenario where there has been some issue which will prevent the customer from completing the task and the message needs to be passed to the team. Let's test it out. Hello? Hello, this is Alice calling from ABC Law Firm. May I speak with Martin, please? Yep, that's me. Great, thank you for confirming. I'm calling to remind you about an overdue task. The task is to send information about your assets, including each asset's value and ownership type. 
This task is currently three days overdue. Is everything on track to complete this task? Um, yeah, I'm actually not sure in which format I should be sending it. Could you please send me a template that can fill it out? Certainly, Martin. The information about your assets should be sent via email to intake at abclaw.com in an Excel format. The file should not have a password. I'll make sure to pass on your request for a template to the team. Is there anything else you're having trouble with regarding this task? Um, no, that's it. I just need the template. Thank you for letting me know. I will pass on your request for a template to our team. Just to confirm, you need a template to fill out the asset information in Excel format, correct? That is correct. Thank you for your time. I wish you a nice rest of the day. Goodbye. Perfect. All right. So let's test then and see how automation works. I think it was this one. So as you can see, this issue raised branch was executed because in the analysis, in the structured data, we got that the issue raised was not sure on which format to send information, requested a template. And if we now go to our Clio matter, we'll be able to see that we have a new, a new task for a client experience an issue with, with this task set for today, uh, referencing as well the task name. And if we go to the notes, we'll be able to see that we have a new note, issue raised, not sure in which format to send information, requested the template, and a summary as well of the code. So it's work perfectly, working perfectly fine. Now, and lastly is obviously our last branch would be if everything is going ahead. So let's, you know, you've seen a demo at the beginning, but let's test it out another time. Hello. Hello, this is Alice calling from ABC Law Firm. May I speak with Martin, please? Yep, that's me. Thank you, Martin. I'm calling to remind you about a task that is currently overdue by three days. The task is to send information about your assets, including each asset's value and ownership type. This information should be emailed to intake at abclaw.com in an Excel format without a password. I wanted to check in to see if everything is on track for you to complete this task. Yeah, I'll probably need another four days to complete it. Thank you for letting us know, Martin. I have noted that you will need another four days to complete the task. Is there any issue you're facing or anything specific you'd like me to pass on to the team to assist you? Nope, nope, all good. Great, thank you for your time. I wish you a nice rest of the day. Goodbye. Perfect. All right, so let's check it out how automation works. So the information that we get in from VAPI is the following. We get the summary. We also get the task completion date, time commitment in four days. Then from ChatGPT, again, we are passing um, today's, today's time and as a output in four days, we uh, get the results. So that would be today Thursday, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So this is perfect, the 1st of July. Uh, we are then parsing that information um, in a format that make can understand creating a note and then creating a task. So let's check out our matter. A task for the 1st of July in four days to follow up with the client or task. And as well in the notes, a new task with the commitments to complete this by Monday. Commitment to complete obtained. And again, a summary of the call. Now, obviously this is just a brief example of how an assistant like this may work. Obviously, it can be much more complex. You can also add things such as function calling where the agent during the conversation will be able to get information, for example, about the case details or look up any information online. We will also be able to act again throughout the call um, and make some kind of actions inside of your system as well, such as, for example, completing uh, booking or uh, confirming a calendar time, which if it's available or not. So. Really, the sky is the limit here with, in terms of possibilities. How close is technology to being ready to be deployed? I would say already it can be deployed on some simple tasks. Now, it's still obviously not perfect. Sometimes the voice agents, um, like the voice breaks or uh, they get something wrong. So again, not ideal yet, 
but at the speed that it's moving, I think in six to 12 months, they'll be perfectly capable to replace some, uh, some of the mundane tasks that paralegals are doing now, again, in terms of doing chasers, in terms of uh, calling, calling up to confirm appointments and things like that, they'll be able to deploy it in production perfectly fine. Now, test out the platform for yourself in terms of um, what improvements could be made to the current system. Obviously, we can make it much more flexible. Uh, we can make it so that it not only picks up the, um, due, the tasks that are three days overdue, but uh, maybe something more complex. We need to do much more testing in terms to understand that it actually consistently performs and providing the correct information before deploying to production. But I would say go ahead, experiment, see for yourself what you can do for your specific use case. If you get stuck, definitely do let me know. And uh, I would be happy to help. And I hope you got some value out of this. Thank you for watching.